Hello my friends! It is Sunday afternoon and we're going to go ahead and keep reading in Fuzzy Mud. When we left off, oh my goodness, Tamaya's hand was covered in blisters and all bloody. She went to the school nurse and her mom's going to take her to the doctors after school. Ugh, let's see what continues to happen. We're on chapter 17. It is Wednesday, November 3rd at 1045 in the morning. By the time Tamaya made it back into Miss Filbert's, the class had already moved on to math. There were two inflated balloons taped to the bulletin board. She learned later that only Sam and Roshana had succeeded with their how to blow up a balloon instructions. And according to Hope, Miss Filbert had to fudge just a little bit to get those to work. Throughout the morning, Tamaya felt a pang of disappointment every time she glanced up at those two balloons. She was sure she could have had a balloon up there too, and with no fudging. She had to write left-handed, which was nearly impossible. Even if it was math, she had a terrible time just trying to make the number two. So what's wrong with your hand? Hope asked her. I'm not supposed to eat peanut butter, she whispered. Peanut butter makes your hand bleed? She shrugged. She didn't want to talk about it, not with Hope. But she didn't think her rash had anything to do with peanuts or peanut butter. It had to be the fuzzy mud. 2 times 4,096 equals 8,192. 2, 2 times 8,192 equals 16,384. Plastic bag was no longer allowed at Woodridge Academy, and no one past the second grade would be caught dead holding a lunchbox. Tamaya and her friends carried their lunches in reusable cloth sacks. Monica's sack was black with rhinestones and a peace sign. Hope's was black with a red heart. Tamaya's was plain white frayed around the edges from its many trips through the washer and dryer. The girls headed down the stairs towards the lunchroom. If they ask you about why your hand is all bandaged up, Hope said, don't tell them it's a rash. Tamaya didn't know who they were. She figured Hope was just talking about the other kids in the lunchroom. Rashes are gross, Monica agreed. Tell them someone stabbed you with a pencil, said Hope. That's gross too, Tamaya pointed out. But, like, it's the kind of gross that boys like, said Monica. Tamaya still didn't know what they were talking about. Summer was in the other fifth grade class, who was waiting for them just outside the lunchroom. What happened to you? When she saw Tamaya. She stabbed herself with a pencil, Monica answered, before Tamaya could say anything. Summer looked very worried. Why? Just because, said Hope. Not really, Tamaya whispered. The four girls entered the lunchroom. Act like you don't know that they're there, Monica said as she set out towards the same table that they sat at the day before. The older boys were already there. The lunch period for the upper grades began 14 minutes before that for the middle grades. Tamaya was relieved not to see Chad with the group of boys, although she was curious where he was. Looking around, she didn't see Marshall either. She hoped nothing bad had happened. Don't look at them, Monica sharply whispered. We're just sitting where we always sit, said Summer. If they happen to be there too, said Hope. Well, that's just a coincidence. Mm -hmm. Tamaya bit her lip. She wondered when her friends had decided that they'd sit next to the boys again. Or maybe they hadn't even talked about it. Maybe it was just one of those things that like she was just supposed to know. The girls stepped over the benches and sat down at the table without even glancing at the boys. Tamaya kept her eyes down. What happened to her? asked one of the boys. Summer turned, oh, hi, she said, as if not even noticing that the boys were there. Tamaya stabbed herself with a pencil, said Monica. She smiled at the boy. It went right through her hand, said Hope, in one side and out the other. Cool. Tamaya examined the rest of the contents of her lunch and didn't look up. She knew they were all staring at her. If she could have, she would have crawled inside her sack. Didn't it hurt? asked the boy next to her. Tamaya's heart was beating very fast as she continued to concentrate on her lunch. She had a sandwich, a juice box, a granola bar, and a container of sliced fruit. Of course it hurt, said Summer. What do you think? The boy touched Tamaya's other arm just above the elbow. Why? he asked. It took all the courage to turn and look at him. Why not? she replied. The boy continued to stare. He was obviously very impressed. She smiled. At least nobody thought she was a goody two-shoes anymore. 
So, did you guys hear about Chad? Asked one of the other boys. Tamaya felt as though she had been jolted by a thousand volts of electricity. What about Chad? She asked. He's gone, said the boy next to her. He's been missing since yesterday afternoon. He never made it home, another one answered. All the boys were talking at once. The police are looking for him. He's probably in jail somewhere. He's already stolen like 10 cars. Tobias' head was spinning. Again, she looked around the lunchroom for Marshall. If he was in jail, then the police wouldn't know where he was, asked Hope. No, if he didn't tell him that that was his name. Tamaya's feeling of dread returned stronger than ever. It wasn't her rash or a ruined sweater or having to lie to her mother or fear of being beaten up by Chad. It was worse than all of that. It was this. She stood up, then a rush of dizziness made her grab the edge of the table. Are you all right? Asked Summer. Taking her lunch, she nearly fell over the bench as she stepped away from the table. She had to find Marshall. Where are you going? Asked Monica. As she moved through the lunchroom, desperately looking for Marshall, she could hear different groups of kids talking about Chad. He climbed up on top of the school and is trapped up there and can't get down. He joined a motorcycle gang and he's on his way to Mexico. He got into a knife fight and is lying in some hospital with amnesia. He can't even remember his own name. Everybody seemed to think that whatever had happened to Chad, it had been his own fault. He was a bad kid and bad kids do bad things and then bad things happen to them. Nobody suspected that it was a good kid who was really to blame. A goody two-shoes with perfect attendance who had done only one bad thing in her entire life. Tamaya went down the hall and pushed open the door. She felt a welcome blast of cold air. She took a deep breath as she looked out past the soccer fields to the woods. Chad was out there somewhere. She was sure of it. How else could she and Marshall have gotten away from him so easy? It was because she smashed that glob of fuzzy mud into his face. Deep down, she must have known it all along. She looked at her bandages, covering not only her rash, but also her guilt. Whatever was happening to her hand, Chad's face had to be ten times worse. She spotted Marshall, who was playing basketball with a group of boys. She'd never been so relieved to see anyone. Marshall! She shouted as she ran towards the game, calling his name out two more times. He glanced at her as she neared the court, but then kept on playing. I have to talk to you! He ignored her. Boys were running up the court. The basketballs flew through the air and bounced off the rim, and then the boys were running the other way. Oh, come on! She exclaimed. She knew he didn't want her talking to him at school, but that didn't even make any sense anymore. For the last two days, she's been eating lunch with the older boys. If they weren't embarrassed to be seen with her, why should he? It wasn't like anyone would accuse him of having cooties. It's important, she yelled at him. Someone threw him the ball. He caught it, took a quick look at her, and then dribbled past to someone else. The boys were all down to their shirts. She stepped over their crumpled blue sweaters as she moved up and down the sideline, staying even with Marshall, trying to catch his eye. He wouldn't look at her. She studied her bandages and thought, maybe I really do have cooties. The ball clanked off the edge of the backboard and was coming her way. She raced after it, caught it at the third bounce. A boy came toward her, hands out, expectantly. I have to talk to Marshall, she said. Come on, girl, just give me the ball, said the boy. Tamaya held the ball against her chest, wrapping her arms around it. What's your problem, girl? He demanded. Marshall came towards her. Quit being a pest, he said. Chad's missing, she told him, although as although as she said it, she realized that he must have already known that. So, he said. He put his hands on the ball. She held tight for a moment, then loosened her grip and let him take it. She waited by the court for the game to end, her eyes constantly returning to the woods. The lunch period for the upper grades ended 14 minutes before the middle grades. When the bell finally rang, she hung back as the boys were retrieving their sweaters and then she slowly approached Marshall. What? He snapped. We were the last to see him. We have to tell someone, she said. The other boys were heading back into the building. No, Tamaya, Marshall said firmly. You can't tell anyone, ever. Look, he's the one who hit me. I didn't hit him. Besides, it's got nothing to do with us anyways. He ran away from home or something. She held up her bandaged hand. Look at my hand! I know, you told me your mom's taking you to the doctor. No, look at it, she screamed as she pulled the bandages away and ripped away the medical tape. All the gauze pulled loose and a powdery substance is sprinkled out, the same powder that had been in her bed earlier. 
Marshall stared. Even Tamaya was stunned by how much worse her rash had gotten since Mrs. Latherly had treated it. Huge blisters, bleeding and crusted over, now covered the entire area from the tip of her fingers down past her wrist. Smaller bumps extended halfway to her elbow. That's really bad, said Marshall. The mud in the woods, Tamaya said. I think it's dangerous. I picked it up with this hand and then I smashed it into Chad's face. She was afraid she was about to cry, but she fought it off. Into his face, she screamed. So? Why do you think he didn't chase after us? He's still out there and it's all my fault. You don't know that for sure, said Marshall. I have to tell Mrs. Thaxton. No, you can't, Marshall insisted. I already told her that I didn't see Chad yesterday. What are you going to say? We walked home together and you, you saw him, but I didn't. Think about it, Tamaya. Oh, now I remember, Mrs. Saxon. I did see Chad yesterday. He beat me up in the woods. I just forgot. I have to tell somebody. It's just mud. And anyway, I heard he joined a motorcycle game. He's on his way to Mexico. You know that's not true, said Tamaya. I don't know anything, said Marshall, and neither do you. He turned away from her. She stared at him as he was heading back into the building. He never looked back once. Fourteen minutes later, Tamaya was on her way to the basketball court when the bell rang for her to go in. She didn't know what to do. She didn't want to get Marshall in trouble, but somebody had to do something. She remained there, motionless, as kids all around her returned into the building. Once again, she gazed out into the woods. She took a step toward the soccer field, then another. She walked slowly at first, but her pace increased with every step. She tried not to think about Mrs. Philbert or Mrs. Thaxton. She started to run. Her lunch sack swung from her hand. She was glad she still had it. Chad must be hungry. Two times 16,384 equals 32,768. Two times 32,768 equals 65,536. Chapter 18. Wednesday, November 3rd, 1 o'clock p.m. It had been more than a month since, ba since Marshall had played basketball with his friends. A month since he'd had any friends. And all it had taken was a day. Just one day without Chad. Marshall never did anything, Laura Musgren had said. Chad's just mean. Those had been the sweetest words he had ever heard in his whole life. Still, as he sat at his desk in Mr. Davidson's class, three seats away from Chad's empty desk, he couldn't get the image of Tamaya's grotesque hand out of his mind. Torn strips of bloody gauze had dangled from her blistered flesh. He saw her eyes, too. They pleaded with him to do the right thing. Man, just when things were finally getting good for me, he thought. Why do girls have to go and ruin everything? Always. He knew the right thing to do. He knew he had... He had known it since Mrs. Thaxton had come into the classroom and told everyone that Chad was missing. The only reason he hadn't told her the truth right then and there was because he didn't want to get Tamaya in trouble. That's what he told himself. He had kept quiet for Tamaya's sake. But deep down, he knew that was not the truth. He had remained silent because he was scared. Scared and ashamed. Not that it mattered anymore. He knew it was just a matter of time before Tamaya had told someone, either a teacher, Mrs. Filbert, or else Mrs. Thaxton. The classroom phone buzzed and the sound seemed to vibrate down into his bones. As he watched Mr. Davidson speak on the phone, he tried to read the expression on his teacher's face. His leg trembled beneath his desk. Mr. Davidson hung up and Marshall quickly cast his eyes downward, pretending to concentrate on his book. Marshall, Mrs. Thaxton would like to see you in her office. He'd been expecting that, but the words still came as a jolt. His chair squeaked as he pushed back up from his desk. He stood up and walked out of the room, desperately trying to appear calm. He started up the stairs. Nothing made sense anymore. Chad had beat him up, yet he was the one getting in trouble. Everyone was so worried about poor Chad. Where's Chad? Did you see him? Did you talk to him? What did he say? Chad's missing? Good. He's gone. And I'm glad he's gone. Did that make him a bad person? He reached the top of the stairs. The office was to the right, but Marshall's eyes were drawn the other way, down a short hallway, to a door with a window. Daylight shone through. He stared at the door for a long moment. 
Maybe it was time people started worrying about poor Marshall, he thought. He stared a moment longer, but then turned to head towards the office. Tamaya was right. It was time to tell the truth. Mrs. Latherly had her back to him as it was bent over and placing some folders in the filing cabinet. Mrs. Thaxton asked to see me, he said. The school secretary straightened up. Oh, hi, Marshall. We're, we're glad you're here. He wondered what she meant by that. She sent him back to Mrs. Thaxton's office. The headmistress's door was open. He could see her sitting at her desk, staring out the window. He stepped inside and cleared his throat. <clears throat> you wanted to see me? She turned. Do you know where Tamaya is? It wasn't the question he expected, and for a moment he wondered if it was some kind of trick. Mrs. Thaxton's face quivered. Do you? She demanded. Miss Philbert's class? She's not there. She never returned after lunch. I know you two spend a lot of time together. Not a lot. We just walk to school together, you know, because we live on the same street and her mom won't walk, let her walk to school alone. The words came out of his mouth as his mind was busily trying to grasp onto something and figure out what was happening. Monica's her best friend, he said. Maybe Monica knows. I spoke to Monica. She said Tamaya suddenly left the lunchroom for no reason and never came back. Where were you at lunch? Outside playing basketball. Did you see her? Um, let me think. I think I might have seen her by the court. Did she say anything to you? Now I remember. The ball bounced away and she got it and I went and got it from her. She didn't say anything to you about leaving school early? Well, this morning, she told me that her mom was picking her up after school to take her to the doctor. She got this really bad rash. Maybe her mom picked her up early? Mrs. Latherly left a message for her mother. We're waiting to hear back. Tamaya's pretty good about following rules, Marshall pointed out. She wouldn't just leave without telling someone. I know, Mrs. Saxon said. That's exactly what worries me. Marshall waited, but for a long time, Mrs. Saxon didn't say anything. She was looking at him, but it felt more like she was looking through him, as if she'd forgotten he was still there. You can go now, she said at last. He didn't have to be told that twice. A short while later, Mrs. Saxon announced over the PA system that the school was being put on lockdown. Students and teachers were to remain in their classes with the lights off and doors locked. No one would be allowed to enter or leave the building. By then, Marshall had already slipped out the side door. Like an escaping prisoner, he had dashed across the grass, frantically climbed over the fence, and disappeared into the woods. And that's where we're going to pause, my friends. <laughs> Tobias missing. Chad's missing. Marshall's going after her into the woods with who knows what. Oh, oh my gosh. I cannot wait. I'm going to do another video this afternoon because I can't leave us at this, this like suspenseful moment. So we're going to keep going. So check back later on this afternoon and we're going to continue on with our story and we'll jump into chapter 19 together. What will happen next? Tune in later. Find out. Bye guys.